En la noche del Lobo Cine procuro subir siempre películas clásicas de misterio, terror, crimen. Pero en esta ocasión os dejaré con una película que no sé cómo describirla. The Terror of Tiny Town o Terror en la Pequeña Ciudad. Una producción del año 1938 dirigida por Sam Newfield y producida por Jet Buell. Sin duda, al menos para mí, la película más bizarra y más rara que he visto, ya que es el único western en el que sus actores, digámoslo para no ofender, son gente muy amable. La trama sigue a un valiente vaquero que decide ayudar a una ranchera en apuros amenazada por una banda de bandidos locales. A pesar de partir de un guión típico del género western, la película introduce una serie de momentos cómicos, como la llegada de los vaqueros al salón agachándose para pasar bajo las puertas, o las escenas de los protagonistas montando en ponis mientras cuidan pequeños terneros. Gran parte del reparto está compuesto por miembros de la troupe de la Jet Viewers Midget, conocidos por interpretar a los Matchkins en El Mago de Oz en 1939, aportando un toque único y distintivo a esta producción. La película tiene una duración de 62 minutos aproximadamente y está en versión original subtitulada al español. Sin más, os dejo con The Terror of Time. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, we're going to present for your approval a novelty picture with an all midget cast first of its kind ever to be produced. I'm told that it has everything. That is, everything that a Western should have. It's a soul-stirring drama, a searing saga of the sagebrush, and it's called The Terror of Tiny Town. <laughs> But I must caution you not to take it too seriously. Uh, this picture be... Hey, mister, come down here. I want to talk to you. Uh, pardon me. Excuse me, there's a slight correction. You mean it is serious? Sure it's serious. I'm the hero. After this picture's out, I'll be the biggest cowboy star in Hollywood. Wait a minute. A star in Hollywood. Who are you? Well, who are you? I'm the villain. Who did that? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The applause is okay. But who laughed? I'm the toughest hombre that ever flew lead. And I ain't afraid of the biggest one of you. I'm the terror of Tiny Town. And that's the star part. That's what you think. Yeah, that's just what I think. Oh, wait a minute, man, man, wait a minute. We'll see. Let's go through the picture. <laughs> that's a swell idea. Let's go through with the picture. <laughs>
Buck, you've got all that chirping out of your system. Maybe you could get back to the ranch. Sure, Dad. I'm riding back right away. I want you to go up to North Fork Range, see what's wrong up there. What do you think's wrong? I don't know. I was up through there the other day. There ain't hardly a calf on the range. And I don't think cows will quit having families. Maybe mountain lion's been getting them? I didn't see any lion tracks. Well, I'll scout around and see what I can find out. away with our calves. I jumped a bunch of rustlers at work. Rustlers? And they left in such a hurry they forgot their branding iron. Keep or pee. Tex Preston. That's the way I read it. Why, that low-down coyote. I fought Tex Preston to a standstill 15 years ago, and it looks like he ain't learned his lesson. That branding iron fixed things with a loss in our kit. Now we'll throw a scare at Tex Preston. You boys know what to do. Stay here and watch for my signal. Everything. Things are not so good. Seems like I'm losing stock lately. When I was riding over this way, I found a cow of yours laying in the brush. She'd been shot. What? Someone killing my stock? It looks that way. There was a calf hanging around. Looked like he was related to her. But he carried Pop Lawson's brand. Well, a low down coyote. Killing my cow so he can steal my calves. Why, I fought Pop Lawson to a standstill 15 years ago. You think he'd know better than the monkey with a buzz saw? <laughs> Mr. Preston, <laughs> I think to myself, you're tired of eat beef, so I cook you a nice duck. Oh, boy, she looks beautiful in the frying pan. This comes from our fried stock. <laughs> looks to me like somebody ain't very friendly. Uh, I've got a pretty good idea who didn't. No one ever asked me for a fight without finding me willing to oblige. <laughs> Mr. Breston, uh, I think for myself again, you have to eat beef. Fritz, Fritz, doggy, doggy. Ducky, ducky. Fritz, come here. Fritz, come here, ducky. Nice, nice calm. You go away, I don't want you. Go away, go away, go away. Come here. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt you. Come here. For goodness sake. Can we not sit down somewhere and talk things over? Come here, Fritz. Come here. Fritz. Look at a nice corn. I can eat myself. Come here. I won't hurt you. Fritz. Come here. Ducky. Ducky. Wait for me. Come here, Ducky. Come here. Come here. I just want to make 
make friends with you. Look, Fritz, I'm getting late for the boss's dinner. And I am getting tired. Fritz, I only need you for one minute. Come out, I got something for you. <laughs> I got something nice for you. Ah! Help! Help! Richard, you around here someplace. Enjoy yourself while we're waiting for the stage. As I was saying, I never thought that Mrs. Clancy could be so small. You're absolutely right. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. Howdy, Tick. Oh, Sheriff. I'm warning you, Tick. Don't start no trouble in town. I won't have no trouble. And I won't run away from it either. There's no sense of all you boys riding to town. You scout around and keep an eye off the rustlers. But you might meet up with that Preston outfit. If I do, I reckon I can take care of myself. I don't need someone to ride herd on me. All right, Dad. We'll head back. <laughs> Those supplies. Hello, Tex. What are you doing in town? My niece comes in on the stage today. Your niece, huh? Coming out for a visit? No, she's going to make a home with me. Her folks died, and I'm all the kin she's got. She's not coming to a very peaceful spot. Oh, it'll be peaceful, all right. When I do some exterminating that needs to be done around here. And you're just the man that can do it. Don't worry. We will do it. Come on.
on the stage? I stood for rustling in a lot of dirty work. But holding up the stage might mean murder. That's going too far. If you don't like my game, just say so. The warden at the penitentiary would just love to see you come back and finish your time. When a man wants to go straight, why won't you give him a chance? Try about that some other time. What about that money? It's due to arrive on this stage. Now you're talking sense. Beat it. Well, Beth, how's everything working out? Great, Nita. I'll sure keep my promise and load you down with diamonds. I can tell the way. Bartender, my private bottle. Yes, sir. Coming up. Will you be in town for a while? No, I got a little job to do. The one I told you about? Yeah. I just got some information about it. I'll see you when I get back. Be careful, will you? Don't worry about me. Anybody in town got any cabs? They better watch him today. I thought the county paid a bounty on coyotes. Instead of letting them run around loose. Seems to me, I smelled something that should be buried. It smelled mighty like a polecat. 
Why, you? I won't get shaved here today. I might get smallpox. On. Let's pick up their trail and see what they're up to. Are you all right, miss? Um, nearly fine to death, but otherwise all right, thanks to you. You had a right to be scared. <laughs> Nobody would have found that right a pleasure trip. Why, it's outrageous that a respectable citizen should be endangered like that. I'll see that something is done to put a stop to it. That's the way for a man to talk. I'll have the sheriff take you along when he goes after those outlaws. He needs more men like you. Lend me a hand with those fellas on top, and we'll take the stage on in. Someone will hang for this job. Pete in there was a good man and a good friend of mine. Maybe he'd rather ride on top with me. Yes, I would if you don't mind. I'm proud to have your company. Cowboy, climb aboard or we're going to leave you. Hurry up!
a charm, Carl Buck Lawson. Do we stand for that? What do you think? I think we should send Baby Bates after him. Sure, boss. I'll make smoked beef out of him. Shut up. Take it easy, Baby Bates. He'll get his. Only we'll do it the smart way. We'll have those two outfits killing each other. It's about time we run off another bunch of stock. Don't you see the dynamite, you local maverick? held up today, Sheriff. They didn't get anything, but they killed Pete and a Wells Fargo messenger. Mm, that's too bad. Sheriff, outlaws have been mighty busy around here of late, and I can't see where you've done much about it. You better not plot the Sheriff, Buck. He might take an interest in all that gun smoke out your way. That ain't just according to law. Why Wait a minute, you... Buck. You're wrong, Bat. Any man's got a right to protect himself. What's the matter, Nancy? Forget something? Oh, no. I was just looking around. Oh, well, there ain't much to see in this town. We better get going. All right, Uncle Jim. But it seems like I should say something to the man that stopped the runaway. The least you have to say to him, why the better. All right, boys, we'll get started. I got an idea I'd be wasting my time. Meaning anything in particular? No. It just seems that you don't have any luck when you go hunting outlaws. Dad, don't you think we'd better get back to the ranch? All right. I don't admire that remark Buck Lawson made. He's too smart for his own good. I'm taking him out of circulation for long. Folks, we ain't been able to round up enough prime beads to make it worthwhile sending a trail herd to the railroad. I bet I can thank Pop Lawson for that. And the sheriff must be on his side. Why, I'm being rough and poor and can get no help from the law. You better do something about it pretty pronto. I'll do plenty. Put on more hands, but get men that can sling guns. I'll stop it. I'll ride in the town and see what gunfighters I can locate. All right. Just thinking, what a fine world this would be if there weren't some Lawson's in it. I think it's a pretty nice place, just as it is. And I'm sure you're the nicest uncle in the world. Going for a ride again today? You don't mind, do you? Why, bless your heart, no. Go on and enjoy yourself. For me. What would you like to eat? Oh, a half a dozen sandwiches, some boiled eggs and pickles. Where are you going to put all that? In my saddlebag. In your saddlebag. And then where are you going to put it? In my tummy. In your tummy. A little girl like you. Every day she gets more appetite. Oh, I get terribly hungry when I ride. Yeah, I know. It's the exercise. Why do you want two pieces of cake like yesterday? Yes, two pieces. You make such wonderful cake. I know.
Cowboys' hearts are lonely, sad as a coyote's wail. But I am never lonely when you and I hit the trail. For I'll see my soul. As we ride along down on the sunset trail with the stars to while we side by side down on the sunset trail the road is long. But our hearts are strong and cheery, and I'll sing a while as we come each mile down on the sunset trail. mighty pretty. Why didn't you tell me before this that she could really sing? Can I? The best I've ever heard. Liar. Honest. Was that song for me? Well, there's nobody else around. Did you really like it? Why, certainly. That is, all but the finish. The part about the wedding? Oh, I see. A woman hater. Don't you ever think of settling down? Not until I stop this feud between our families. I hope you can, Buck, soon. Oh, let's forget all this trouble and just go on with our picnic. Wait a minute, Buck. I'm trespassing on the Lawson Ray. Aren't you going to throw me off? Well, not until after we've had this lunch. Oh, is that the only reason why I'm welcome? Just because I feed you? I'm not saying it is, and I'm not saying it isn't. In other words, you don't believe in taking chances. Well, come on. I'll feed you anyway. A range war is like rolling a rock down the mountain. Easy to stop, but mighty hard to stop. But you don't hate me, and I don't hate you. Why can't we be allowed to live in peace? We have the right to be happy. We could have all that. If only we could make folks use common sense instead of gun smoke. Oh, I better get back to the ranch. to reason with Uncle Jim, but it only makes him angry. He just won't listen to me. We still can be friends, in spite of everything. Just friends? But there's a very serious matter I want to talk to you about just as soon as I get this trouble ironed out. I'll be waiting. Just the way you ride the line, gagging with one of the Preston breed? Dad, she has nothing to do with the quarrel between you and Tex Preston. She's of the same breed, and man or woman, I won't have one of them on my range. Dad, I don't take that kind of talk about my friends. Please, Buck, don't quarrel with your father on my account. 
If there's any quarrel, it's of his making. Dad, if you're calling for a showdown, I'm standing pat. You favor my enemy. You're not my son. two old war horses understand some common sense. If you don't mind, I'll ride right a ways with you. as fast as you can. I don't allow no losses on my ranch. Get before I make a chip on you. Uncle Jim, please. Do as he says. There won't be any trouble. You promise? I promise. Now you make threats and make a promise. You're not afraid to shoot it out with me, are you? No, I'm not. I dare you to talk to me for five minutes. Why, I never took a dare in my life. Come on. Come on, start talking. I'll make it fast. Tech, you think our outfit rustled your stock. I know you're wrong. Well, I've lost plenty of stock. So have we. Are you rustling from us? I am not. Hold on, Preston. You agreed to talk for five minutes. Well, all right. We're both losing stock. You blame us, and we blame you. That don't make sense. Doesn't it strike you as being reasonable that someone is playing us against each other and rustling from both? If you and Dad would stop this fool war and work together, we might find out who it is. Even if I was willing. It takes two men to stop a war. If you'd only meet Dad halfway, I know he'd be reasonable. Well, you sound honest to me. And I believe you're talking horse sense. I'm glad you see it my way, Tex. I'll make Dad wash off the war paint and meet you in town for a powwow. Will you be there? Sure. So long, Tex. So long, Buck.
can just kill such a person over on the south path. Shot him in the back. Hit leather, man, and shoot on sight. I'm sorry, Nancy.
showing a lack of interest in that Dresden girl. What I do is my own business. Oh, like that, eh? Yeah, just like that. That's where you're wrong. You owe me plenty. And don't get the idea you can kick me off like an old shoe. What do you do about it? Stick around. You'll find out. I'm so sorry, Nancy. What do you mean? What have I done? Don't pretend. Bad Haynes said you shot my uncle. He lied. Nancy, you can't believe that. Oh, I don't know what to believe. I left you talking to Uncle Jim, and now he's dead. That's what I came to tell you. Only two people knew that Jim Preston was killed. Myself and the man who shot him. Bad Haynes and I are due for a talk. You. Hold on, Buck. I'm arresting you for murder. And who say so? Bad Haynes. Hold on, Bad. This man is in the custody of the law. I'll take those shooting irons. We both know who killed Tex Preston. Yeah, but I know who's gonna hang for it. Don't bank on that too heavy. Get going. If we could stop this rustling, we'd pull out of the hole all right. But there's no chance to raise any money right now. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Yes, sir. Your uncle was talking about taking on some more gunfights. I've located three or four. No, I'll have no more bloodshed. Yes, sir. I think Buck Haynes is a snake in the grass. Snake or no snake, he'll be boss around here pretty pronto. Oh, yeah, boss around here. Don't forget I'm the cook. I fix him. Why try to run a cow ranch? That's no job for a woman. Now, as my wife, no, that's out of the question. What's the matter with me as a husband? Why, uh, someday I'll be the biggest man in this county. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, still hankering for that half pint that murdered your uncle, eh? I don't believe he did it. You mean I lied? When two men tell a different story, one of them lies. All right, I try to be friends, and for thanks, I get slapped in the face. Your uncle owed me a lot of money. You better be ready to pay it up. You know I can't right now. <laughs> That's your word. Thanks, Otto. I hope you get stomach trouble. Otto, how many times have I told you not to eat so much pie? Do you want to get sick? I feel all right. Hurry up and get ready. I want you to ride to town with me. Okay, okay. you think so? We'll check the way you've been acting. 
Don't pay so much attention to me. in our own hands and take care of Buck Lawson in our own way. Oh, well, I've been waiting a long time for that. Nancy, it was mighty nice of you to drop in and see if they take a good care of me. I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do to help you? There's nothing to worry about. They can't convict me of something I never did. That hay's going to drink. Everybody chin up to the bar. <laughs> for their money. forget there's a law in this town. That's all right, Sheriff. We figure to save you some bother. Come on, man. Hurry or you'll be too late. Poof. Get the boys. We're riding to town. You're back of this, hey? You're not man enough to fight it out with me. Why bother? This suits me all right. Sergeant, you're to be strung up until you are dead. Hold on, men. Buck Lawson is innocent. It was bad Haynes who... Ah! Here we are! From now on, I'm playing a lone hand. Take care of them, Dad. I got a job to do. Buck, wait! I'll be right back. 
Drop those guns, Bill. Be careful how you do it. Are you hurt bad, Sheriff? It looks like I'm at the end of my trail. Seems as if all the rustling and caused all the trouble between me and Tex Preston. When Rita was in with me. Didn't find him in the cabin at Big Rock Canyon. Got it all your own way. I'll give you an even break. That's more than you did for me. think so, but what happened? You just missed being an angel by about three seconds. I think you're somewhat of an angel right now. What is this important matter you wanted to talk to me about? That's right, I forgot. Wait a minute. 